Hello, how are you guys doing today? This is Brayton, and today's video is going over dupa or retrograde alopecia, a severe case of androgenic alopecia that is unpatterned, typically, uh, comparatively to the normal Norwood pattern for males, where it goes through the temple and on the crown and then down the center for women. Now, what makes dupa or retrograde alopecia more aggressive? That is what we're going to be going over today, or more just severe in general. It's a lot harder to deal with and or get treatments for, and why it's like you need to push the protocol when it comes to, you know, your androgenic alopecia you know, medications and or treatments uh, and why, you know, you need to, you know, push the envelope when it comes to that stuff and maybe need stronger dosaging and maybe just add more in general. And it's just why it's just harder to deal with than normal forms of energetic alopecia. So that's what we're going to be going over today. And uh, yeah, um, well, I'll hop right on in. So what is dupa or retrograde alopecia? Well, for retrograde alopecia, I guess I could show a picture right here. It is where the nape areas here or the donor hairs are going to be effective like the top of the scalp. So that means there's not really a pattern there. So these hair follicles are affected by androgens like dihydrotestosterone, just like the normal on, on top of the head's, you know, scalp areas for, you know, normal uh, androgenic alopecia. But it's just these hairs are going to be affected by dihydrotestosterone as well. And typically when it comes to forms of dupa and or retrograde alopecia, they, they're going to be more severe. So typically who people People who are experiencing androgenic alopecia and they have dupa and or retrograde alopecia they're going to have more severe cases so that means that they're going to maybe have earlier signs of androgenic alopecia than the average male or female so this means that these hair follicles on the side of the scalp or just all over in general are just more affected by dihydrotestosterone for when dihydrotestosterone binds to the androgen receptor in the hair follicle in general and then expresses its effects causes premature miniaturization of the hair follicle and slowly turns that terminal hair goes through the hair growth stages and slowly or more fast it honestly depends if you have pretty severe you know energetic alopecia like you know retrograde alopecia that gonna make that hair follicle speed up in the hair cycle and eventually turn into a velous hair which is a little peach fuzz kind of and then eventually it's gonna die out completely because of you know uh, dihydrotestosterone has you know slowly miniaturized it to just like apoptosis just gone so in general that's pretty much what duba and retrograde kind of al uh, retrograde alopecia kind of is at the end of the day it's just pretty much it's going to be unpatterned uh, androgenic alopecia. And it's going to be very unpredictable. That's what makes it un or so severe. Because, you know, with normal forms of androgenic alopecia, it has a pattern. So that means your doctor can you know, diagnose you, treat you, and, you know, it can, you know, obviously it's going to go away or, and, or stop the hair loss and you know, give you monox to help you grow hair. But, you know, forms like Dubois retrograde alopecia, they're unpredictable. It's harder to deal with and you're going to maybe need stronger treatments because maybe the finasteride or minoxyl isn't enough and you're still noticing androgenic alopecia on the side of the scalp or you know on the top of your scalp as well because maybe your hair follicles are more sensitive to dihydrotestosterone so even the little bit of dihydrotestosterone you had in your scalp from maybe if you're using something like finasteride one milligram daily or dutasteride 0.5 milligrams daily it's crushing only 40 percent or 50 percent scalp dht there's still that other half of dht in the scalp that could be affecting your hair follicles and still causing hair loss, androgenic alopecia. And even with minoxidil trying to grow hair, you still be experiencing some forms of androgenic alopecia from your retrograde alopecia or your diffuse thinning in general. So for example, I, my anecdote, I have diffuse thinning, you know, I experienced very bad diffuse thinning on top of my scalp and even on the side of the scalp, not as severe as retrograde alopecia, but I did notice thinning kind of all over my scalp, but mostly primarily on the top around, you know, my 16, 17, that's when it was the most severe. And, you know, I did use finasteride and dutasteride, you know, in my, my early 20s. I started finasteride when I was 18 and dutasteride when I was 20 or 0 0.5 milligram dutasteride when I was 20. But I, in, and minoxidil too, you know, taboo minoxidil with migraine needling. And yes, I grew a lot of hair from that, but I still noticed diffuse thinning and my hair was wet. It was still very noticeable. Like I'd wake up in the morning and my bet, my head would be super frizzy because, you know, you know that happens with curly hair. Your hair gets really frizzy. And then you, you notice, you look in the mirror and when it's extra frizzy these hairs right in this areas are like extra thin and it's noticeable to the eye of you know other people not just you so you know that's what that's my anecdote at least when it comes to diffuse thinning and so that's what makes you know, retrograde alopecia and dupa it's that they're just more aggressive cases typically on average than normal you know forms of androgenic alopecia for the average male and average female and so that's why you may need to push the envelope more here because those individuals may be more sensitive to androgens or the hair follicles are more sensitive to androgens than the average person on normally not all cases but uh typically yeah 
So what are some treatments that I'm going to recommend? Obviously, you know, the run of the mill, you know, you want to talk to your doctor about, you know, your finasteride, your tutasteride, and of course, minoxidil too, and, you know, maybe combining your hair growth stimulants. If you want to try, you know, other hair growth stimulants, maybe some like PP405, that's up to you, and our topical antiandrogens, uh, you know, topalutamide, stuff like that, that's up to you. But when it comes to, you know, treatments uh, like verifinasteride, minoxidil, obviously you should talk to your doctor about so, but... For people with retrograde alopecia, they're gonna probably gonna need a stronger treatment. For me, what stopped my diffuse thinning almost completely was 2.5 milligrams of dutasteride daily, and that completely stopped my diffuse thinning. And my hair is like thick all over completely, and it's I've noticed complete stoppage of hair loss in the shower for example and lose a couple hairs in the shower comparatively to before where it was like a ton you know obviously the average person loses around 50 hairs a day and from normal shedding but it was way more than 50 hairs a day so um it's definitely completely stopped and the diffuse thinning has stopped and it's especially in my crown because my crown was the worst and uh yeah it's been great for my anecdote at least for 2.5 milligrams of dutasteride daily now for people with retrograde alopecia and dupa in general, you know, especially for males, they're going to have to push the envelope a lot more when it comes to, you know, 5 alpha reductase inhibitors. My personal opinion, I think dutasteride 2.5 milligrams daily is going to be the most effective for it crushes around 80% of scalp DHT comparatively to the, the 0.5 milligram dutasteride dose of 50% scalp crushing of DHT. And yes, it crushes systemic DHT by a lot. You still have that scalp DHT. So, and then mixing maybe with a hair growth stimulant is going to help, you know, keep your hair more thicker and keeping hair growth and uh, just all around your hair more dense. So those are going to be my personal, like, treatments for some, someone who has, you know, a retrograde alopecia or dupa. But obviously, you should talk to your doctor about that, do your own research. And it can be kind of hard to get, I guess, for 2.5 milligrams of dutasteride, but I believe it is worth it. Now, for women in general who are experiencing androgenic alopecia, especially something like retrograde alopecia, well, it's more rare, but dupa and retrograde alopecia can occur in women too. So, uh, typically, I'd recommend maybe just finasteride, uh, just because women are going to have a lot less dihydrotestosterone in general. Yes, they can experience androgenic alopecia, and their hair follicles can be very sensitive to dihydrotestosterone and androgens in general. So, I wouldn't recommend, you know, 2.5 milligrams of dutasteride. That may be overkill, but... Uh, there's a possibility that just finasteride 1 milligrams daily or even just maybe dutasteride 0.5 milligrams daily is going to be very effective for stopping retrograde alopecia and or androgenic alopecia in women. Uh, and especially mixing with a hair growth stimulant like minoxidil too, you may have great results at, you know, stopping your androgenic alopecia. So I definitely would talk to your doctor about so if you don't want to start a hair growth stimulant like minoxidil, I think something like just a one milligram finasteride daily or 0.5 milligram dutasteride is going to be a great option at stopping androgenic alopecia in women. Now, I wouldn't like if your doctor talks about starting like an anti-androgen, something like spirolactone, for example, I would not do so just because testosterone is still very important for women. So I, I really want it. I try to tell your doctor, hey, maybe can I start with a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor? instead of, you know, something that crushes my testosterone as well. Just because testosterone is still very important for women to, you know, properly have proper hormone balance when it comes to estrogen as well. And keeping a little bit of testosterone is good for, you know, muscle building uh, as well as just like things like sex drive as well. It's, it's important to have a little bit of testosterone as a woman. In general, dihydrotestosterone isn't really very important in general, especially for women. Uh, it's, it's not going to do much. And even for males, it doesn't do much after puberty. So, you know, I think you, if your doctor would, is trying to prescribe you an anti androgen I think you should try to, you know, talk to him about starting something like finasteride or dutasteride 0.5 milligrams, um, as a, maybe a better alternative, you know, with less side effects in general. So, but that is up to you at the end of the day. Now for males who are going through puberty and they're experiencing retrograde alopecia or diffuse thinning or dupa in general, um, this can be a hard one to deal with because it is an, if it's an aggressive case or a severe case of androgenic alopecia like retrograde alopecia, it, there is, because, now in my opinion, I don't think, you know, using a 5 alpha reductase inhibitor during your adolescence puberty is the best idea, but it's up to you. If you think you are, you know, maturated as a male, um, think your secondary male characteristics are developed, and you, you want to keep your hair, then yes, I maybe, you know, talk to your doctor about starting a 5 alpha reductase inhibitor like finasteride, and if you... But if you have retrograde alopecia, something like dutasteride 2.5 milligrams 
may be just the best alternative to actually stop your hair loss as you know if you're experiencing retrograde alopecia or dupa but you know i would try to start with you know things like good care growth stimulants topical you know um you know finasteride maybe since it doesn't go systemic possibly topalutamide and research chemicals but that's a mixed bag for me uh i'm not gonna recommend that but i would say you know talk to your doctor about so but it is it is definitely a, a harder scenario to you know to go into because you know there are some you know possible risks when it comes to that but it is your decision at the end of the day um if your hair you know outweighs certain things as a teenager but when you're an adult, dihydrotestosterone doesn't really play much of a role. You know, possible balancing of androgenicity in the body. But it, it really kind of just depends what your aromatase activity is and, you know, your androgenicity is. You know, some individuals who are experiencing some side effects from, you know, things like 5 alpha reductase inhibitors typically just have higher aromatase activity. Um, and, and that's what the side effects are coming from. Um, but with time, typically those side effects either diminish or mm, your body gets used to it or you have increased androgenicity from, you know, the increase of testosterone, possibly, from the 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. It just depends on how your body reacts, your lifestyle, environmental factors, stuff like that. You know, obviously talk to your doctor about so. So I think that's going to wrap up today's video on my just kind of stance on what is the best treatment for people who are experiencing dupa or retrograde alopecia. And, you know, it is going to be the 2.5 milligram dose of dutasteride daily. I think it's going to be just the most effective. It can be kind of hard to get your hands on it, but I think it is worth it to give it a shot. And even when it comes to certain side effects, it can be titrated, of course. And, you know, usually the side effects diminish with time. And obviously you can use things if you're having like libido problems, you can, you know, use, you know, small doses of Tadalafil, even like in my last video, for example, or, you know, talk to your doctor about, you know, if you are experiencing side effects from, you know, 2.5 milligram dutasteride or, you know, hair loss tre treatments in general, yeah, <laughs> I have videos on it. Um, I won't get into today, for this is the conclusion here. For women experiencing retrograde alopecia, definitely try out finasteride at 1 milligram daily or, you know, possibly dutasteride 0.5 milligram daily. Um, and hair growth stimulants too, like minoxidil, possibly things like tretinoin to compound to make the minoxidil more effective. I, and I maybe could, I would maybe recommend microneedling, but there could be some, you know, more fibrosis, I guess, things and side, effect, uh, side effects uh, from, uh, you know, microneedling. But it just depends, you know, at the end of the day, it's up to you. But yeah, the, I guess that is kind of my uh, opinion on what I think is the most effective, more easier to get your hands on treatments. I guess you could say things maybe like uh, some topalutamide, pyrolutamide, stuff like that may be possibly more effective, but we don't completely know at the moment. I just from the research I've seen from the dutasteride doses, I think it's going to be more effective when you use 2.5 milligram dutasteride for it crushes like 80% scalp DHT. And then you mix something like a hair growth stimulant like minoxidil, you compound it with, you know, your microneedling and or your uh, tretinoin. Uh, right, not and. I want to do tretinoin with microneedling. Microneedling or your tretinoin with your minox topical minoxidil once or twice daily can be a very effective hair growth stimulant compounded with your dutasteride um, 2.5 milligrams daily, which is going to crush all, or not all, of most of scalp DHT, all of systemic DHT pretty much though. Um, that is going to most people who are experiencing retrograde alopecia or diffuse thinning or dupa, that is going to most likely stop their androgenic alopecia in its tracks, in my opinion, from what I've seen in a lot of literature, anecdotes, and things that I've read. So, but yeah, that is uh, my opinion at the end of the day. Just talk to your doctor about so I'm not a medical professional. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you uh, have any feedback you guys want to leave in the comments down below, feel free. Um, and yeah, if uh, I got anything wrong or anything you want to add, and any recommendations and or stories you want to tell about your hair loss journey, feel free to leave in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, feel free to like and share. So yeah, anyways, uh, I will see you guys later. So.